morning to all of you. Good morning. Uh, uh, respected Mr. Roy, uh, coordinator of NITTR Chandigarh, and all the other coordinators of other institutes, my dear colleagues. I am Prasid Misra from Sivaraman College of Engineering, and I am going to present a topic on marine pollution. So, before going to my uh, topic, marine pollution, let's have a brief discussion on what pollution is. So actually, as we all know, it is an introduction of contaminants into natural environment, which causes adverse changes, which is very hazardous for the different types of life forms existing uh, on the earth. Now, pollution can be in the form of chemical substances. Also, it can be in the form of energy, like your noise or heat energy or light also. So generally, they occur in the form of natural ways. Uh, some are also from man-made natural ways, like the uh, forest fires, uh, volcanic eruptions, and all. And man-made, as we all know, urbanization of our cities and industrialization, which leads to all this pollution. Now, generally, your pollution is uh, classified uh, into two types: uh, as the source, as uh, a point source, and non-point source. A point source is something which is where wait, uh, wait, wait, Mr. Misra. Wait. Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, aapki na PPT next ni ho rhi hai. Yaha pe show ni ho rhi hai. Jab next kar rhi hai. Next, sir, PPT ko. It's not moving. Okay, sir. Let me find out. The screen share dobara se kijiye. Yes, yes, sir. Now it has. Next, 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 Yes, yes. Now it is all right. Yeah. Carry on, please. Is it all right, sir? Yeah, yeah. It's all right. All right, sir. Should I start from the beginning or should I continue where I left it? You can start with this introduction to pollution, yeah. <laughs> As we all know, uh, pollution is uh, introduction of different types of contaminants into the natural environment which cause adverse changes, which is very hazardous for the different types of life forms existing on Earth. Now, it can be in the form of chemical substances or can be in the form of energy as well, like your noise energy, heat energy, or light energy. And pollution occurs in generally two ways, natural ways, also man-made ways. Natural ways like the forest fires, volcanic eruptions, and man-made, as we all know, urbanization of our cities, Industrations, so all this leads to your pollution. Now, basically, it is divided into point and non-point source. So, point source is something which is where the origin is identifiable. We know that the pollution is coming from a particular area, so we can go there and we can measure the quantity and the quality, how much pollution is uh, occurring here, how to rectify it, and also so the point of of analysis and non it is very easier. But coming to the non-point source. So it is very. It is not uh, the origin of the thing is not uh, uh, identifiable properly, and also it is a combination of your different types of pollution. Also, for example, if you take uh, pollution like air pollution or water pollution or thermal pollution, we exactly know that thermal pollution are coming from lots of industries and all. But uh, so coming to my topic, that is marine pollution, which is the part of non-point source. Because the origin is not from exactly in the marine. The origin is actually the point source of industries or the disposal of different wastage from the cities and all, which ultimately is, is disposed in the river bodies, ultimately which connect connected to the ocean or seas. So in non-point source, basically the origin is point, but it contaminates somewhere else. So now coming to my topic, marine pollution, which is a part of non-point source, so generally, it comes. It, it occurs when very harmful potential uh, chemicals, particles, or industrial, agricultural, residential waste enters into the ocean, or waste from the ship and the land-based industry. And uh, to the fact, 80% of the marine pollution are caused by land, and a majority of it is also contributed by the air pollution. So we'll go in details into that in the coming slide. In the coming slides. Now, sir, coming to the sources of all this marine pollution. Now, 
uh, marine is actually something related to oceans and seas so these are the sources first one is direct discharge of waste into oceans second one is run off into the water bodies due to rain pollutants that are released from the atmosphere steam pollutions and deep sea mining so we'll go in details into all these things first coming to the direct discharge so as the name suggests the waste particles or the different types of uh, waste uh, liquids and all which is directly discharged into the water bodies like pollutants entering into rivers or sea from the urban sewage or from industrial waste in the form of solid as we term the plastics and all and also in the liquid as as you can see from the figure given here so it if if in generally in the, near the coastal areas and all where your industries or your uh, hotels and uh, restaurants are situated so all the, uh, the waste particles coming from all these things is connected through a drain and that is that leads to it to go you know then then coming to the next one pesticide and fertilizers which is generally washed away in the rain ultimately connecting the river and reaching the sea so which actually enhances the growth of algae which forms a very hazardous environment for the marine life forms inside now next is we require minerals in for our development and all, uh, for extracting it we do inland mining so minerals like copper and all this is very harmful for the marine life so these are the uh, sources of uh, direct discharge sources now coming to the next one this is land runoffs land runoff is generally the runoff of the surface from farming lands or urban runoffs like construction of roads buildings so basically uh, in the coastal areas where your road is just uh, beside the sea so during the rains and all all the uh, surface of the roads and all the materials they go into the sea which is very hazardous than the farming runoffs now in the farming all the fertilizers and the nutrients they get washed away uh, from there and they ultimately connect to the sea which gives a bloom uh, uh, live livelihood of the fleshy algae which, which have a very hypoxic condition or uh, which creates a very hypoxic condition which utilizes almost all the oxygen so the marine life they are deprived of the oxygen content so which has already led to uh, death of different life forms in the marine marine fields now the next one is harmful gases released from the so released to the atmosphere now mostly the wind blows from the surface to the sea so the wind carries all these plastic bags or debris or dust particles which contaminates the seas now climate change has a, has got a very important role in this raising the level of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere which are, which is a greenhouse gas now ultimately when the carbon dioxide is increased in the atmosphere and it is absorbed in the sea water so th- in order to balance it in order to have a chemical equilibrium so carbon dioxide react with the water bodies and they form hydronions ions and all so which acidify the oceans which is very hazardous for the marine life forms so these are the sources from the atmosphere now coming to the ship pollution as we all know that uh, world's largest carrier of goods and all are made through ship transport uh, which is which is also the backbone of different types of economy of different countries because majority of bulk amount of material is transported through ships only but ship is also responsible uh, for its uh, for discharging different types of uh, harmful uh, harmful liquids or gases into the atmosphere like ballasting of ship is done to balance it while traveling on the ocean so when this ballast water is released so it is released in the ocean which pollutes the ocean there now there are different kinds of ship carriers also like if if you are carrying some cargo it is cargo ship if you are carrying oil also it is oil carrier if you are carrying gas then it is gas carrier then passengers are also uh, travel passenger also travel in the ship those are called passenger liners so all these ships generally you are oil carriers and gas carrier so if there is any leakage in the pipelines and all so the oil gets spill up, spill up in the ocean which is a which is also very hazardous for the environment there for the marine life now all the ship engines are basically ic engines which use diesel diesel as a fuel so basically the 
basically the grade of the diesel is very low which is used in the um, marine ships because generally the purpose of using diesel here is power we do not consider or we uh, do not have any uh, more majority we do not focus on the efficiency of the ship so the diesel here when it is com when combustion is done the gases are emitted to the atmosphere which consists of your sulfur oxides and nitrogen oxide which are very harmful gases now again uh, due to the different types of radio signals and the vibrations uh, due to the movement of the ship which also disturb the path of different types of mammals present inside the oceans now in, basically in, in the war ships and all they use the uh, ultrasonic waves in order to track the the enemy submarines and all so these ultrasonic wave waves creates a lot creates a lot of problems for the mammals because they use generally the uh, uh, vibration to guide their ways into different types of places inside the ocean so we can uh, also we would have witnessed before you can you would have seen on television or in movies so whales and all they are dying out and they are just uh, left out on the shore of the land so this is the, this is one of the reason for that the use of all these ultrasonic waves in order to detect some submarines or to detect the surface how much distance is there from the uh, ship to the surface so this creates the hazards then sewage discharge mostly in the passenger liner ships so these are the uh, different types of pollution created by ship and the most important is if you are having an accident in a road transport you are not contributing to the pollution but if you are having an accident in marine field if it is a gas carrier or oil carrier so all the oils and all it gets spill up over the ocean and it takes a very long period to take away all these things so these all these are all the factors which uh, dedic which uh, are the sources from uh, ship pollution then coming to the next one is deep sea mining so there are we also extract minerals from underground the sea beds and all so removing parts of sea floor basically disturbs the habitat there now the sediment plumes as you can see in the figure is generated inside the sea also and also on the surface of the sea but in the at the surface of the sea it is more because it can spread over a vast area so it can contaminate a long region as you can see from the figure now there is also a term called dredging so this dredging is actually uh, the ship when they the, there is a deposition of the, all this soil near the harbor so it is very difficult for a ship to come near the harbor and this and it, Uh, take off the loads which it which it is carrying and all so we dredge it or the phenomena is called dredging where we pull out all this oil through some mechanism and we throw all this soils and all uh, to the sea bodies so this actually contaminates the sea also but it is needed because in order to reach the if you do not reach the harbor then we cannot offload the things which we have which the ships are carrying so these are the reason for the pollution coming under deep sea mining and all now these are the sources now coming to the impacts how what impact it is having now basically it is divided into four types eutrophication is one impact acidification loss of marine life and coral bleaching now eutroph eutrophication is something which is due to the flowing of the nutrients and fertilizers into the sea bodies as you can see in this figure there is growth of all these algae which deprive the oxygen to the marine life inside it inside that water bodies so this is the it creates you can see here the uh, dead bodies of some life forms in the marine uh, due to this due to this reason the acidification as i've already discussed in the previous slide is uh, acidifying the uh, the acidity of the uh, water bodies it increases so ultimately it decreases the metabolic rate of the life form present in the marine and you can see the corals here so here is what is happening and uh, this thing this phenomena is actually called coral bleaching so this is because of the acidification of the ocean because generally your algae and coral they benefit each other so when there is acidification all this algae they dies up before that the algae used to protect the corals and from waste and they used to give some oxygen to the corals also and the, in in return to that coral also gives some uh, good protection to the algae but due to this acidification all the algae dies 
Now the coral, you see, this is the live coral, which is healthy and all. This is the after effect. Okay, Mr. 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 Yes, sir. I have a question. Yes, sir. Is there any natural hazard which may cause pollution in the sea? Uh, natural hazards like, uh, sir, volcanic eruptions, or uh, uh, which can, if 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 there if, if there is any volcanic eruption, then all those materials which are coming from the volcano, they what, can. Apart, apart from volcanic eruption, do you know any other natural hazard? Sir, mostly, sir, the majority of the hazards are man-made. Those are not natural in the sea. Have you heard about a phenomena called El Nino? Yes, sir. Yeah, Evo. So that is a change of direction of winds due to the climatic uh, due to the climatic diversion. Not only that, the hot stream starts coming from the nearby Pacific region of the Latin American countries like Peru, and it starts from there all of a sudden in the month of winter. El Nino means a little little child little boy that is that is also known as unko ye kehte hain jesus christ jesus christ ka chota roop kehte hain so little boy this kind of phenomena occurs during the month of winter near up to 20 20 to 30th of the december all of a sudden is hot stream starts coming from that region and it passes through various region and lot of marine uh, marine uh, life is disturbed lot of uh, huge number, huge number of fish and other aquatic animals die in that kind of activity all of a sudden climate changes inside the uh, uh, inside the marine everything changes so they don't they cannot bear that kind of situation so hot hot water comes all of a sudden and lot of fish and aquatic animal get disturbed and they die and what happens after that all the sea water becomes black due to the death of such animals so you it has this kind of phenomena has been observed it comes maybe after one or two years in the gap of one or two years so this impact is known as el nino okay all right sir Okay. So thank you, thank you for the information, sir. And sorry to miss out that also in my presentation. Right, carry on, please. Thank you, sir. So, so these are the impacts uh, uh, which are occurred due to the marine pollution on our environment, loss of life, uh, which is the more ma major part of it. Now, the steps which we are, which uh, al already has taken, and some steps are being implemented now also. It's like. First and most, and the foremost is the amendment of MARPOL, Marine Pollution Act, that is introduced introduced in the year seven, 1973 and 78. So it has got different types of annexure, and it has been incorporated year wise. Like the last annexure, that is Annex Six, is incorporated in 2005, starting from the first annexure, which has which has been incorporated in 1983 or 84 something. Now, going into brief into that. The like annexure one is to check the engine room waste, like if there is any leakage in the oil or spillage of oil in the oil tankers and all. So they have to check it. And annexure two is uh, discharge of all these liquid pollutants, like other liquid waste which is coming out from the uh, ships and all. Now to check the good packing, if you are carrying any radioactive substance and all, the packaging must be very good. The packaging must be very good. It must not emit any type of radiations and all. Annexure four to check the sewage from seas, as we have already discussed, the passenger liners they used to put up the sewage into the seas and also now there is a strict law, so that they cannot put all this uh, sewage into the seas. And also annexure five, so uh, uh, good distance is maintained from the land in which material may be deposited, which is subdivided into different types of garbages and marine debris according to its effects on the environment. So there is a strict vigil on this. Now the latest one is the Annex Six to check the air pollutants like the sulfur dioxide, sulfur oxides, and nitrogen oxides gases being emitted from all these IC engines used used in the ships. Now there are other uh, there are also some other strict laws incorporated in the in the in the world now because now we have been very keen on 
protecting our environment because the global warming issues and all these things like oil pollution act nairobi convention it is a big it, it was a big convention held in nairobi discussing about uh, different acts which came uh, different implementation done to prevent all this pollution occurring in marine field also it, it says that if something is uh, done in a mass way it has to start from an individual so we can also organize a beach cleanup plan like our honorable prime minister used has already started this swachh bharat abhiyan and all so we can also do it in our own surrounding as i as myself i belong to puri which is a coastal area so we can take up initiative in cleaning the beach and all or different clubs rotary clubs and all are also very active in these things now reducing the solid waste by recycling we should have more recycling unit so that the waste material is uh, the uh, uh, radiation from the waste material do not go to the atmosphere and all and we we must assure that the rain water is only goes to the sea not the drain water so it has been the government and the official they are on very vigil on all these things now there is something called riparian planting planting of small trees near the uh, shore of the oceans or seas which actually rest, restrict all the minerals or nutrients being washed away by the rains and all going to in, going inside the seas now imo is also an body indian maritime organization which gives uh, power to port and flag state which take strict legal action if there is any violation in, for, in regarding the polluting polluting the environment in marine fields so that's all sir from my side thank you okay. very much